probably could have just started and ended the video right here. HTMX allows you to write less JavaScript. It's because you have developers coming from a different ecosystem that are not in that JavaScript ecosystem and they just want to get shit done. They want to write their code, make dynamic web apps, and they don't want to have to go commit to something that they're not used to. HTMX provides the tool for that. Today, we're going to be talking about Django and HTMX. So this is a topic that's been very popular lately. I found a Reddit post that I really enjoyed the entire thread of and the question, the responses to it and so on. So we're going to take a look at this. But before we get started, I want to quickly recap Django, what makes it special and different from other frameworks and specifically Python frameworks. And then we'll just kind of summarize HTMX. So first of all, Django is a Python based web framework and it comes with the batteries included approach. So that means that it's a framework that gives you all the tools you need to build out web applications. Everything really comes with it. So authentication, an ORM, a templating engine, all that's already built into it and it makes it very powerful, which is why a lot of people like Django. Now in the Python world, you have other frameworks like FastAPI, Flask. These are micro frameworks and they basically allow you to build your own web applications. They give you that core structure but a lot of the tools that you need, if you want to use an ORM, you have to choose your own, like SQL Alchemy or any other options. Uh, if you want a templating engine, you go with Jinja or another option and so on. So the micro frameworks let you build out web applications, but they don't come with all the tools, whereas Django is a lot more integrated and it basically gives you everything you need to build out full stack apps. Now, one of the things that makes Django so powerful and one of the things that I really liked it for in the beginning was that the templating engine allows you to build out full stack apps. You can render out content dynamically and it works great up until the point where you have to add in dynamic content. Maybe you want to uh, interact from the client side to the back end. You want to update something. Then you have to start writing your own JavaScript. Now, HTMX is a JavaScript library that allows you to add in these interactions without writing any custom JavaScript. So you basically add in attributes into your HTML and you create those interactions. Now, the other way of building these interactions is to use Django to build out some kind of REST API and then use a client-side framework and you can create those interactions. But the fact that Django is a full stack framework on its own already makes it really, really powerful. Adding HTMX into that mix makes it even more powerful. So this is kind of my first take on why it's such a good combination is because it makes what is already complete even more complete and it takes away those limitations that we previously had. So let's jump into the Reddit article and we're just going to start reading and I'll break some of these comments down. So the question is, what is so great about HTMX? I'm curious why so many people using Django are suggesting HTMX. What makes HTMX so different than making requests using plain old JavaScript, event listeners, fetch, etc.? Not to mention it makes the code difficult to read. I've used it in the past, ended up replacing all of the functionality with JavaScript, and I want to know, am I missing something? So the response here was actually from the creator of HTMX. I believe it's Carson Gross. Uh, and I love the response. He did a really good job of breaking things down and also providing more context into this question. So Carson responds, hey there, I'm the creator of HTMX. I think the big reason to use HTMX over plain JS is a few big things and then a lot of little things. Big things would be history support, input value collection, event filters, staying in HTML centric syntax, etc. Smaller things would be stuff like ignoring click controls on boosted links, request indicators, request queuing, etc. The concept is simple enough that for some cases, just rolling your own JS is fine, but the deeper you get into it, the more HTMX is going to allow you to re-implement. Some folks say that HTMX is for people who don't want to learn JS, and there is some truth to that. So this is a big one right here. Uh, a lot of developers from that Python community have maybe just started with Python or they're deep into that world. And just to start building web apps, they have to learn a bunch of JavaScript, and it's not their ecosystem. So HTMX is actually a really good tool that allows you to maybe avoid that to a certain extent. So it really makes sense here. HTMX definitely lets you stay out of JS and in the Python Django or whatever backend environment you're using. A lot of Go developers love HTMX because of this, actually. That being said, I do recommend learning JavaScript and using it in a hypermedia friendly way alongside of HTMX where appropriate. One absolute criticism of HTMX is that it's basically unknown when compared with the big SPA frameworks. If you're looking for a job, you are far, far better off learning React, which has tens of thousands of job postings. So this is really true. And 
and I like that he posted this. Uh, HTMX is newer. It's not widely adopted, so it's good to use. There's advantages to it, but if you're in the market for trying to get a job somewhere, you're trying to work in a more traditional organization, uh, at this point, stay away from it. If that's your end goal, HTMX is not going to be the right thing for you. As far as when HTMX and hypermedia in general might be a good fit and when it might not be, I wrote an essay on the topic here. So I would highly recommend checking this out. I'll make sure this is linked up in the video description. Carson basically goes down to the situations when you should use it, when you shouldn't. I think he broke this down very, very well. I would highly recommend looking at it. Maybe I'll make a follow-up video on that. Now, Carson ends his response like this. I've been surprised at how much this sub has embraced HTMX, and I have been glad to see it. But I also recognize it isn't for everyone, and it certainly isn't for every technical problem out there. Sometimes writing your own JavaScript or using a reactive library is the right choice. So good points by Carson. Definitely agree with all of it, actually. Now, this one's a reply to Carson's comment here. So I'm a big fan of your work. However, we are still falling back to trusted old JS shit because of the sheer accessibility or extensibility of JS. Is it possible to set up a forum and have more examples of how HTMX works? Programmers need more work and examples to save time and write close work. Okay, so... This is something that was posted about two years ago. At this point, Carson has a great example section on the HTMX documentation. So things you could do at this point, we are seeing more and more work and examples as it's been adopted. So I agree with this and I'm glad that we're starting to see more of it. So the more adoption we see of HTMX, the more we're going to see work and examples and then actually learn how to implement it. And then hopefully the job market itself kind of catches up to this. This comments from Eric Kalkoken. Here's a real life example of HTMX in a production site migrated away from Django and React to Django HTMX main advantages. So this is a link to a talk at DjangoCon from 2022. And some of the notes made, I need to review this myself, by the way, but the notes made were faster page load, much less memory usage in the browser. That's probably due to the fact that you're server rendering stuff and then bringing it forward. So you're putting more effort on the server, less on the browser itself. New features become possible that were too slow with React, smaller code base, much less JS dependencies. I can definitely agree with this last one here. It's the perfectionist with deadlines ideal. So I actually believe that's the official Django slogan in their documentation. It's like the backend framework for perfectionists with deadlines. And this comment says, so we don't end up with hundreds of little libraries that do essentially the same thing. HTMX is one script, minimalist, polished feature, so you can plug into anything. So it's literally, if you look at the actual HTML code, it's one JavaScript file with about 3,000 lines of code. Uh, very easy to plug in. You can add it via CDN link. So this, I would agree with. It's actually very minimalist. You add it in, you plug and play, very simple. Comment from complete shame 8252 What I like best is the HX boost feature, which makes regular links and forms work as if JavaScript were disabled. Other things that make it great is that you don't need to write any JS, just add in a few attributes in, into HTML elements. And the third thing is that you can render out and replace blocks of Django template, and you don't need to make any REST or graph endpoints. So yes, this is kind of what I mentioned in the beginning where you don't have to build out a REST API and then connect to it and basically add in a layer in between it. You can start writing your Django blocks of code and simply include them into your template as you're re-rendering and replacing stuff. And it makes it very simple. A common theme here is a lot of people not wanting to write JavaScript. I think this comment is coming from a very practical perspective here. So I came to HTMX from Django wanting to get some reactivity in my forms without losing some of the great function of Django. I have used it for about a year now and I find it very easy to use fast and easy to read. I have done a lot of the React and JS TS projects in the past, so I do love my front-end frameworks, but, and by the way, I do too, I use React a lot, but they all have so many dependencies and need a lot of updating and general tending. I don't think you can replace React with HTMX. I love this point right here. It's not meant to be a full replacement. I've made this argument before but I see it as a tool that lends itself well to Django in a particular way when paired with HyperScript and can be very versatile. So it's not trying to pin HTMX versus React or any of these other tools, even though you do see those in headlines. It's such a different approach and can, keep, can even be used uh, with those tools. So that's a very practical use case here. So this one is kind of funny. I love this interaction. To avoid learning JavaScript, and then this person responds, this is terrible advice to anybody learning and hoping to become a professional web developer. 
Kind of agree with that, actually. But then the reply just gets even funnier. It would be if this was actual advice. That is not the question, though. The question is, why do so, so many people often recommend HTMX? And it usually smells like people not wanting to learn new things. We've seen this theme quite a bit. And then this response right here from Versatile Guru, not everyone making websites wants to become a professional web developer. This right here is very true. We get into this tend tendency of thinking that anybody in our industry wants to do the same exact thing that we want to do. We all need to be professional web developers. We all need to know data structures and algorithms, and we all want to work at Google. This is not the case, and that's why I love this rebuttal. So in fact, it's the lack of systems like HTMX that make me want to stay away from front-end web development as possible because the insane world of JS dependency and framework hell, bundlers, webpack, and other non sense is just so ridiculous. Many, many teams out there are full stack and aren't big enough to even have a dedicated front end and back end team where they can hand off an API to a React guy and walk away. I've worked on projects like this before where a lot of people just want to get the end product done. They have this idea, this, this real world problem that they need to solve and they don't care about all this other stuff. They don't care about the tech stack or the tools they're using. They just want to get something done. In many cases, you know, like that response saying you need to use JavaScript, that original response here was saying that that's bad advice. Well, if I'm just trying to get the job done, I really don't care about the tool. There are more ideal ways of building things, but not everyone is trying to do the same exact thing. So HTMX is perfect for those people that are trying to just not use any JavaScript if they really don't want to. Now you can use it, you don't have to, and it just abstracts that away. Last two comments, and I promise we're done here. So HTMX means you can do all things without writing JavaScript. It's an abstraction, all front-end libraries and frameworks abstract raw JavaScript, although you can always still use raw JavaScript. JavaScript frameworks promise that you'll write less JavaScript. HTMX really makes that promise. It also means that in the case of Django, you can leverage HTML templating. So this right here, I love uh, that idea of, oh, you're still writing JavaScript. Well, any tool you're using, like a front-end framework, is promising you that you're going to write less or maybe more efficient JavaScript. It's the same reason why you're using a back-end framework like Django is because you don't want to write everything from scratch. So we're using tools so we can write less of the code that we're already writing. I love that take here. I will get downvoted to hell, but this is my take. Python people do everything in their power not to use any other language, even if it means learning C to write a Python extension and keeping in Python. In this case, that language is JavaScript. So I probably could have just started and ended the video right here. HTMX allows you to write less JavaScript. Python people, this is why it's so powerful with Django. This is why HTMX is so popular with the Go community. It's because you have developers coming from a different ecosystem that are not in that JavaScript ecosystem, and they just want to get shit done. They want to write their code, make dynamic web apps, and they don't want to have to go commit to something that they're not used to. HTMX provides the tool for that. So that's really it. I think we could have started and ended there. And that's my take, plus uh, an awesome thread that I saw. Great response by Carson the creator of HTMX.